In this episode, we're going to look at an easy-to-build flood and drain uh, hydroponic system, sometimes called ebb and flow. An ebb and flow or flood and drain system is a type of hydroponic system that pumps water from a reservoir into planters or containers uh, that will flood the roots of the plants and then drain away. One of the important things that you need to think about with a flood and drain system is you need a pump that can pump the water up to the reservoir level uh, but not uh, prevent the water from backflowing. So if you have a, a pump that doesn't allow backflow, uh, then it's not going to work with the flood and drain system. But most pumps on the market do allow backflow. As you see here, I've, I've laid out the connections do a mock setup and when you're doing the setup don't glue until you're ready for final assembly because you're going to make some changes and in the setup here I have all 12 stations set up but on one end uh, I'm going to put that three quarters of an inch T connector with the slip-ons on each section because that's going to be your backflow and the backflow is important uh, because the pump is going to pump water into your system uh, it's going to go through the pipes it's going to fill up your planters and once it gets to a certain level, you want that water to start draining back into your reservoir. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to overflow everything. One of the problems you'll have with the water bottles is that they do not have the same threading as a standard PVC pipe. A PVC pipe has uh, 3 quarters of an inch with 14 threads per inch. So you'll need to grind off the threading and re-thread them. I do this by going to a belt sander, grind it off until the uh, the surface is, uh, is completely rough. Uh, any smooth surfaces tells you the threading is still a little bit there. So grind off the old threading uh, all the way down to the lip, uh, or maybe I should say the rim of the bottle. And once you hit the rim of the bottle, then cut a taper in it because we're going to re-thread it with three quarters of an inch uh, threading die, and that threading die will need a lip in order to get it to get it started. If it's not tapered, it's going to be too flush, and it's going to be hard to get the cut started. So go ahead and cut a lip into it, and then uh, and then we're going to grind in the the threading. Once you finish the taper, go ahead and cut the water bottle. I like to cut the water bottle off about two inches higher than where I want my water line to end. And in this picture you can see uh, that I've cut it off right in the middle of a ridge, which makes it for a good, uh, good cut, but it also gives you a good reference point. At this point, take a three quarters of an inch by 14 threads per inch uh, threading die and cut a groove into the bottle. Uh, cut the groove all the way to the point where it's flush against the rim of the lip. Uh, it may take a little bit of cross threading at first, but once you get it flush and go back and forth a few times, it'll usually straighten itself out. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to glue it. Uh, and as you see in this picture, the, the threading is complete, and this is going to a, make a perfect connection into your three quarters of an inch threaded PVC pipe. Uh, we're also going to add a little bit of water seal uh, to make sure it doesn't leak. At this point I would go ahead and paint the bottle. Uh, painting is important because it keeps the light from getting into the the bottom of the bottle where the roots are going to be. Um, because you're going to have high concentrations of nutrient it's going to make algae flourish unless you cut the light off. And so we paint to cover uh, to block out all the light and prevent gunk from building up inside the bottles. Once the paint is fully dry, you're ready to prime and glue the bottle. Priming is very important. Uh, if you don't use primer, you won't always get a good seal with the contact cement uh, that's used to, um, uh, to marry the PVC pipes. So go ahead and put primer on the, the threading of the bottles and every connection that you're going to glue in the PVC pipes. And that needs to be fully dried before you go to the next step. The primer usually only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to fully dry, depending on how wet you make it. But every 
uh, every connection needs to be fully primed. Here you see the finished and glued bottle. Uh, the glue does not take long to set, so once you put the glue on the piece, uh, you have to quickly screw it on and get it as tight as possible. Uh, it may not go all the way in, but that's okay. We're going to seal it up with some plumber's putty afterwards. Um, go ahead and glue each piece in your staged setup. Glue each, each, each section at a time. Uh, don't glue too much at once because it needs to fully be set. And you also need to put it on a flat surface so that when you're gluing the parts together, you can keep it flush so that you don't get a wobbly system. And as you glue each of the bottle connectors into place, you want to make sure they're at a 90 degree angle straight up and down. If they're a little bit off, it's not that big of a deal, but if they're off too much, you're going to have a water flow problem uh, with it overflowing. But go ahead and glue every single piece in sections except for the overflow. Uh, it's okay to, over, to set the overflow together up to the point where it goes into the bucket. But you'll want to cut that, the last little bit of pipe to fit. Uh, the overflow and the, uh, the inlet water pipe, both of those have to be cut to fit at the time that you're setting up. And depending on where you're setting it, it'll be a different height. Uh, I have the measurements on my website of all the, the pieces. I cut the, the, the center pipes at 12 inches a piece. The pipes coming off the center <clears throat> are 3 inches a piece. That way, I have that way when they're glued in into place, I'll have six inches to seven inches between planters, and then the the end of the pipes, those are between five and a half and six inches as well. So that's once again gives me six to seven inches of growing space for every planter. Once you do a mock setup and have everything the way you know it's going to be set up, then you can go ahead and add the primer and add the glue, get it set let it dry for a couple hours and then um, and then put it on the table or where you're going to set it the, here is the inside of the bucket upon completion the pipe on the left is the overflow pipe the distance isn't that important as long as it gets well below the lid so you don't have splash out and it doesn't stay submerged in the water during the pumping process if it's a little bit below the surface when the pump is off, it's not a big deal because the water level is going to drop when the pump starts going up into the planters. But you don't want resistance from the water uh, during the time when you need the, the, the backflow to be going on. The, pump, uh, the pipe on the right is coming out of my pump and going into the planters. Um, you'll notice I have a valve set up on here, and this is because... My pump was too uh, was too strong for gravity to make up for the overflow. Uh, it was pumping out faster than it could come back in, and it was beginning to overflow the planters. So I put a female to female uh, irrigation valve in there, uh, so I could regulate the water flow. And on the uh, on the pipe going into the the planters, it's just a um, a male to male and coming out on the on the left side of the of the valve is the riser uh, the flex riser and that goes from where the original design was to go from the pipe into the pump now it goes from the uh, regulation valve into the pump so it's always a, a good option to be able to, re to regulate your water this is the finished system as you can see, I have it well, well aerated. Aeration is critical if you want to keep healthy water going into your system. You see the overflow valve on the left, the water intake on the right, um, and it's ready for action, and I'll give you a demonstration. I'll demonstrate by turning the pump on. You can see the water beginning to, to rise. Once it gets about, about two inches from the top, it will reach the bottom of the inside di diameter 
of the overflow pipe and will, be, and will begin to recycle back down into the bucket. As you can see here, it has reached that point and it's pouring back in. And then once the pump finishes its cycle, it will turn off and then the remaining water will, will drain back down into the reservoir. Once your system is finished, cycle water through it about 24 hours before putting plants in it because you want to get all the, the glue fumes and residue out of the system, uh, any debris that's in the pipes so it doesn't clog your pump. You want to get it out and skim it out of the water. I also put my pipe inside of a mesh bag to keep it protected. Uh, but you want to cycle it through and put it on a timer and I like the mechanical timers because you can set them up to work in 15 minute increments and I do it every three hours. Uh, the first 24 hours I do it every one hour for 15 minutes because I, I want it to keep flooding and draining to get all the residue out. And then at the end of that 24 hour cycle I change the water put in fresh water, get my pH and my nutrient level the way I want it to be, and then I set it on a three hour timer. Here you can see the setup fully assembled and in place with the lettuce in it. This is after one day of planting and here is after six days of planting and look how much the lettuce has already grown.